All right, so in 10.8, religious conflict impacting Europe during the Renaissance. Uh, we just talked about uh, some answers to the do now, so here we go. All right, I'll give you a second. So during the last aim, the, counter, the Catholic Counter-Reformation, we had what's called the Spanish Inquisition. So, and here we're here we are talking about Spain again. So, what's going on with Spain? Well, out of all the countries in Europe, Spain is the most Catholic of those countries. So, it's kind of the Catholicism home base. Um, so, the seat of power, although it you know lies in Rome with the Pope, um, the country that is most severely Catholic and kind of passionately Catholic is Spain. And Spain has, um, you know, the, the king in Spain is most closely aligned with, you know, church power and church officials. So there's that tie that kind of binds them together. So um, Spain adopts a policy that's called, and this is one of the great oxymorons of all time, militant Catholicism. So um, basically, the king of Spain, in this particular case, Philip II, is of the belief that you can spread Catholicism through warfare and that um, basically you can convert people at gunpoint. And that's generally the philosophy of Spain during this time and this idea of militant Catholicism. So um, the, this is different from when Orthodox religion, Orthodox Christianity comes on the, on the scene after the Great Schism because those are geographically separated. So when we look at the map, you know, this red color, this is Eastern Orthodox religion that developed during Byzantine Empire. This green color is Roman Catholic. And the blue countries are the Protestant countries after kind of all this is said and done. But it's this region in here that's going to be particularly tricky in Central Europe, where Catholics and Protestants are living kind of intermingled with each other. There's no geographic separation between these two. They're kind of all um, kind of grouped in, in the same areas, and that's what's going to make this particularly difficult. So at this time, the Netherlands, which is kind of up here in, uh, in Northern uh, Europe, um, they have a, you know, it's a Spanish colony, and Spain is super duper Catholic, and um, there starts a Protestant uprising in this area, and Spain sends their military to crush this Protestant uprising and kind of enforce the national religion of Catholicism on the people there. So this is the first example of this militant Catholicism from Spain being put into practice. All right, I don't think I need to pause here because there's not a whole lot going on but if we said that in the last slide that Spain is the most Catholic country so um, it's kind of you know Roman Catholics home base is Spain so Spain is kind of the leader of the Catholic world well the leader of the Protestant world is England England is the home base for Protestantism the same way that Spain is kind of the home base for Catholicism. So this kind of sets these two countries um, kind of against each other. This is now we have religion and kind of political agenda leaking into each other, right? So religious beliefs are starting to dictate political events and outcomes. And that's what we're seeing here. So after this Netherlands business, um, Philip II of Spain realizes that this Protestantism nonsense is really causing a problem for him and that maybe he should just try to wipe out the Protestant religion entirely. So his idea is that we're going to invade England and we're going to invade England and we're going to wipe out Protestantism and everything can just get back to the way it was with, you know, the, the Catholic Church being the dominant, you know, seat of power in Europe and we can just get on with our lives. So in 1588, Prince Philip sends the world's most fierce naval force um, called the Spanish Armada. It is by far the strongest, largest, and most effective navy in the world at the time. And he sends them to England. And I don't want to spoil the story, but um, through a combination of luck and really, really bad strategy, 
on Spain's part. Um, the Spanish Armada is going to be unsuccessful in their invasion of England. They're going to get destroyed almost entirely, and they're going to limp back to Spain um, with having very little impact on much of anything, and Protestantism will kind of go on. Um, but you will kind of see some interesting uh, stories about what happens with the Spanish Armada and why it's such a disaster. This is one of the one of history's more entertaining um, uh, military strategy studies and how it could all go so wrong and such bad ideas. Uh, so you'll take a look at that going forward. Um, and the other aspect of this religious conflict is going to be called the Thirty Years' War. I know when we started studying the Middle Ages, we kind of touched on the topic of the Holy Roman Empire. So the Holy Roman Empire is kind of this territory of central, kind of mid-central Europe in here. And um, it's supposedly totally Catholic, right? We, we talked about Charlemagne and he was kind of crowned Holy Roman Emperor um, during the Carolingian Renaissance, you know, in the beginning of the Middle Ages. And the Holy Roman Empire exists throughout the Middle Ages. But like we said, according to that last map that we looked at, this is the territory specifically where Catholics and Protestants are living intermingled with each other. And there's pockets of Protestantism, Protestantism surrounded by Catholics, and there's pockets of Catholicism that are surrounded by Protestant areas. So it's making for this very kind of tense um, environment with regard to this stuff. So the Thirty Years' War is basically a fight that pops up uh, within the, the Holy Roman Empire, Catholics versus Protestants, but then that those alliances that the Catholics and Protestants have will drag other countries into this conflict. So Spain will run to the defense of the Catholic um, people of the Holy Roman Empire the same way England will run to the defense of the Protestants, and other Catholic and Protestant countries throughout Europe will join their their kind of particular side of this um, disagreement, and this kind of will launch three decades of warfare of Catholics versus Protestants.